Well, Taylor, my friend, that was closer than expected. It certainly was. It certainly was. <laughs> USA 3, Martinique 2, but it ended with Giassi Zardes holding the ball in the corner for the last two minutes, kind of in desperation to make sure we got the win. That's what just happened. It it did. It it almost seemed as though he was trying to make up for maybe some misplays earlier in the game by doing some fancy footwork at the very end. <laughs> well, I have some Giassi opinions maybe we can share throughout the show. I'm a little more pro than I think most people would be. But mm-hmm. first of all, welcome to the Total Soccer Show. Quick take, hot take edition for USA 3 Martinique 2. This is not our in-depth review. Our in-depth review will publish tomorrow. Quick take, hot take is where we hit record almost immediately after kickoff. And we kind of vent and give our initial opinions. Is that fair? Yeah, that's fair. So initial opinions? Not great. (laughs) That's my initial opinion. Well, we're we're top Uh, of the group. Sure. I mean, I mean, I, I put it this way in the, like the pre-match roll in, I think it was Alexi Lalas was saying, you know, we have to take, uh, the result tonight with a grain of salt because it's Martinique. And the point there being that I think he was expecting like a six, no win. Does that really change that much? Probably not because it's Martinique. And yet here we are, it's three to two at the end. And I think Rob Stone kind of ribbed him when they came back with like, so it's Martinique. What do we make of this? <laughs> so do we, should we have a different spice with it? Uh, what spicy would you be leaning towards? Do you think? I'm not sure. Maybe pepper. <laughs> I mean, lemon salt, oh, ang- ang- angry spice. I think she angry was the six spice. Spi- spice girl, and that's what I'm. Because uh, <laughs> I mean that uh, that really is. It just it felt as though, um, like my controversial opinion, maybe controversial, but my opinion is that it felt almost as though Bruce Arena had told these guys go out and prove that you should be here. This is your one chance. Yeah, and so it just felt like everybody was so nervous and so trying to do too much and not enough all at once that it was just a super disjointed performance. And yes, it's three goals. Yes, it's a win. Yes, it's top of the group. But come on. (laughs) Well, are we underestimating Martinique a bit? Maybe. Because I remember after my interview with um, Nathan Carr, of Caribbean Football Weekly uh, what, a cu- couple of days ago. Oh, thank you. Did you listen? Um, I did. I, th- I thought maybe, oh, maybe there's more to this team than we realised. When, when I realised that, say, Langeal doesn't start for them and yet he plays in the Belgian top flight. Do you know what I mean? Like suddenly I was thinking, oh, maybe this team might not just be the pushover that we, we think they are. Yeah. And, and, like, and, and maybe we don't, we don't see them in the hex because they're not allowed to play in the hex. And that's the only exactly. reason we don't think of them like that. Yeah, I mean, totally true. All valid points. I mean, and yes, it is what because they're like a, a French foreign department. Yes, that is easy to just sort of be like, who are these guys? It's a population of three hundred thousand. This is ridiculous. Yes, those are some valid points. I would still say that a couple players playing in a couple decent leagues does not a team make. And more like more to the point is that even then, I would expect the United States to be able to play cohesive soccer. And I yes, think the time, fair, that's fair. very few times that it felt like they did what they were trying to do, they scored goals. Like right. literally, the, I saw on, on the second and third goals, both times. It you mean was the Jordan the United- Morris goal and the Jordan Morris goal? Yes, exactly. <laughs> it was the United States doing what I think they had set out to do, which is get the ball forward aggressively, then establish possession, then find the open man and get that shot. And the two times they did it, they scored two goals. Yeah, the did it look like uh, it just felt so discombobulated? So it looked like it looked like play it into the forwards, then get it wide, then feed it into the box. Is that I guess that sound about right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that was what they ended up doing was kind of look for those long 30 and 40 yard balls. I know some people speculated that that's why Matt Hedges started this game was because he's better playing the ball out of the back. But like uh, my buddy Trey, who's been on the show, he he tweeted or he uh, texted me to say, like, what's the point of playing it out of the back if you're then going to hoof it long? Yeah. Like, why, why not just do the direct goal kick and get rid of it and not put yourself under pressure? And and I think we've talked about this before. And theoretically, the idea is to pull some of those uh, Martinique, like front three forward. So then there's gaps created and there were gaps created that worked. But then the United States still couldn't do anything with that space. Didn't we sort of didn't send anybody into that gap? Because it looked to me like we... Yeah. A lot of times I looked at the shape and it looked like some sort of empty bucket in a way because Acosta and um, Acosta and Roldan would both sit kind of deep, right? And then like Zardes and Ariola would be wide and then you'd have Morris and Agadello up front and there'd be that big gap in the attacking midfield area. So I'm almost like surprised that we didn't like push someone like Roldan forward because I know he can play a little more attacking, right? And I wonder... I wonder if it was a Roldan problem, like he was a little a little too timid about sort of being like, all right, I'm going to be the man, I'm going to step into that attacking midfield space. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know if I would put it solely on him because it felt like 
like everybody was too conservative and too aggressive all at once. Again, it just it felt like such an all over the place performance that I'm having a hard time really like nailing down specific enough criticisms because I was pretty frustrated by the game as a whole. Well, that'll be for the that, review show, right? The full review yeah, show will get yeah. re, we'll get super specific, and we'll, I think part of it will be figuring out what was wrong with the United States. Yeah, I'm fine with that. But <laughs> I, I would say I do think that Christian Roldan a lot of times. Uh, was kind of hung out to dry by his team because I think routinely, I mean, no, he didn't have a good game. Don't get me wrong, but I felt like routinely, like if you go back and look at the breakaway that leads to the second goal for Martinique, uh, he, he is essentially the only player in the United States midfield. Everybody else has pushed forward, including the fullbacks. Mm -hmm. And he is trying to shut down two different people. You can see him sort of looking around like I've got no help. And when they get by him, it's, it's a three V three situation when the United States are up two to one, it just doesn't feel like it was necessary for everybody to be pushed forward. Speaking of that goal, um, I did notice Langille, the guy that scored, the, sorry, not the guy that scored, the guy that sort of burst down the wing, the number 10. Yeah. Um, he pulled, I think I texted you this. Did I text you this or did I tweet this? He pulled the exact same move that he, he pulled that, against yeah. Nicaragua, right? The exact <laughs> same turn and then yep. acceleration. And it seemed to take, I think it was, was it Morrow or was it Matt Hedges? I'm not sure who was Matt there. Hedges. Was it Matt Hedges? It took him by surprise as if we yep. hadn't, as if maybe we hadn't studied the game tape. Maybe we hadn't prepared for Martinique as much as we should have. I mean, based I mean, on, the, on the starting lineup, you could say maybe we didn't take them as seriously as we should have. I mean, from like with like 10 minutes to go in the first half, the commentators, at least I had the, the Fox Sports 1 commentators. I know you were watching on a stream. I had uh, the, the British guy that has an indentured servitude contract with uh, Fox Soccer <laughs> Match Pass. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Stu Holt and Landon Donovan were speculating with like 10 minutes ago in the first half, like, oh, Martinique won't be able to keep this up. They'll be too tired. They won't be able to hang at these conditions and at this kind of like uh, pressurized situation. And I feel like maybe Matt Hedges heard that and was just like, oh, this guy won't run this ball. Today. Oh, boy, he fastened me. <laughs> He sure was. I mean, too fair, he's faster than most people. He is. And Landon Donovan said that there sh- he should have done a professional foul there. Stu Holden agreed that they both felt like you like take that guy down. I feel like that could be a little bit risky because he is sort you of... You could miss him. You could miss him, but you could also... <laughs> I feel like that's a potential to be a very bad foul yeah. because at that point he has created a bit of separation. It might only be a yellow, but you do run the risk of like suddenly you're tackling from behind. It's a lunging challenge to try to break up a play. I could just I could see that going poorly, especially on a night like tonight. Well, I just feel like all I've seen is highlights of the previous Martinique game, and I knew yeah. that Langille loved mm-hmm. that move, right? Because he literally he came off the bench in the last game and the first thing he did was pull that move. So he yeah. came off the bench in this game. I'm not sure if that was his first touch, but it was in the first couple of minutes of him being on the field. Same move. Like Matt Hedges or someone should have been ready for that. Yeah, I think so. I mean, <sighs> I think I think there's lots of people that probably should have been. That's why I think you're right to say <laughs> someone should have. Um, okay, there's okay. There's been some venting. There's been some venting. Uh, oh, I got more to get, but yeah. Uh, do you want to get to venting or do you want, do you want to get to goals? Uh, I'm good to stick with venting for a okay, moment. Let's vent some more. What else, what else do you have to say, Taylor? I mean, I, I, I'll say this. I I don't know why. I really do like Omar Gonzalez. He seems like a nice guy. Definitely. I have a soft spot for him, but I am really frustrated with him. Why because so? Because in the first half, I mean, in the first couple minutes, I think I tweeted out in the 13th minute uh, that he he had everybody step forward. Like he, You could see him push the line forward, and then he – completely forgot that he was playing in a system and dropped off three yards because he saw a runner coming through and did that sort of weird defensive like oh the runner's coming i better get in a position to run with him but when you do that you drop off three yards and suddenly the player that would have been offside is now onside so i I texted you about that it was i went back and found it it was the 11th minute sorry 11 55 is exactly when that happens yeah and i watched it and it's exactly as you described it there's a perfect offside line and then omar just drops and drops and drops and breaks the offside trap and has to run with the guy and it just felt like from that point on, he would make some good plays. Yes, he gets a goal. But I would much rather a center back play like a cohesive game and organize a defense than score a goal via toe poke. Now, he does well to stay on side. I'll give him that. But mm-hmm. like so many times, it was just that sort of strange Omar Gonzalez moment of like, he's not paying attention to that guy. He has no idea that somebody's behind him. Even on the uh, the first goal from Martinique, it comes about because and if you watch it, it will look as though... Paul Areola is the one is at fault because suddenly you'll see him try to sprint 10 yards to get in front of the guy who shoots. But in reality, it's Omar Gonzalez and, awesome. uh, and, and Eric Lee high. Yeah. Thank you. And Eric Lee high are both marking them and then both back off as though they've been told like hold a flat line, no matter what. Yeah. And so they drop off like three or four yards and because they drop off, they're no longer man marking. And that's why there's an opening to shoot. And it, so it just felt so 
disorganized in a way that I just was not anticipating. And I think that's what made it more frustrating. Is that like, you go ahead. I was going to say, I'll double down on that because uh, we talked after the Panama game about the whole US team, maybe being on the back foot and sort of literally backing off too much and sort of letting Panama come forward. Um, In this game, I I remember that first goal. Again, I've only seen it the once, but the, the pass before the pass, before the shot for the goal, everybody backs off of the guy with the ball and he has forever, he has forever to pick out a pass because there's no pressure on the ball and he's in the final third. He's in the attacking third and no one's stepping to him. And I'm not pointing the finger of blame at anyone specifically because I don't know exactly who should have been on him, but I know that as a unit, the US were backing away from him. Yeah. And and so, again, like, yes, it's Martinique. So we, you know, shouldn't be too upset, I guess. But by the same token, it's Martinique. And there's moments like that that, like, if that's Germany... If that's Thomas Muller that you're suddenly backing off of, that man will turn and shoot and score. And now Martinique scored here. But like yeah. later on in the game, um, I think I texted you this, that the announcers again were very praising of Matt Hedges because there was one sequence where he like stood the guy up, the player ended up dribbling out of bounds, and it looked like a really good defensive play. If you go back and watch it. I saw that, yeah. He just like goes down the, d- down the edge of the area with the guy and then gets a block in and the ball goes out. What, what did he do differently? I would I would contend. Now, again, this is the quick take hot take. So I've only watched this once. Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, I've watched it twice, I guess, because I did the seven second rewind. <laughs> but he gets he gets shook a little bit. He does that kind of like step back as though he thinks the guy's going to cut back. And that's all you need if you're a world class forward to create a little uh, bit of separation and then get that ball in or so get that shot off. So you're saying and if the that's someone else, if that's someone else, Hedges is in much yeah. more trouble. Yeah, I think so, yeah. because it ends up being a heavy touch that puts the player out of bounds. And then Hedges does a good job to get back in a position where he can kind of body him off so that mm-hmm. he can't get a second touch to keep it in bounds. So that's good. But he still has that moment of hesitation. And it's just little things like that where it felt like the bar got lowered tonight. And it was sort of like, oh, he did a good job. He didn't let him get a shot off. And it's like, yeah, but. He still kind of got beat there, and he still let him in behind. There are still issues that need to be dealt with. Yeah, I would say that's. I'd say that's not necessarily the bar getting lowered. That's just the nature of some sort of mm-hmm. instant reaction type stuff, where you only see the one. You see the one defensive play, and not the stuff yep. that precedes it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like maybe yeah. a really good defender never has to make a tackle. You know what I'm saying? This is very true. <laughs> Ask Paolo Maldini. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, can we, can we talk a couple more positives or a couple of positives? Sure. Or do you have sure. more, if you have more ranting, I'm all for it because, you know, quick take, hot take is all vim and vigor, right? Yeah, I'm sure I will, but we can come back to it. <laughs> Maybe save them for tomorrow for the long take. Sure. Um, I want to say I'm a bit more positive on Jassy Zardes than most people on Twitter seem to be. All right. Talk us through that. Okay, so you, if you think of the first half especially, um, mm-hmm. the US was not creating many chances and Jassy got a lot of criticism Um, for what shooting over the bar and a couple of shots where maybe he shouldn't have taken them. But he was the only guy who was kind of forcing something to happen and making something happen. I remember a couple of low crosses, like one with his left foot, one with his right foot, that um, one did find someone, one was just ahead of Areola. And in the end, it's Jassy Zardes that manages to square the ball for Jordan Morris, right? So it's not... It's, I don't think he had such. I don't think he had the bad game that people think. I think he's just going to be. He's going to be frustrating because he's going to make a lot happen by virtue of how sort of energetic and how always involved he is. But in the end, I think he's a net positive for the United States at least tonight. And I would even say he looked like a centre forward being asked to play on the wing, which I know he does a lot. But in terms yep. of like say his contribution as an attack, his contribution in as an attacking force versus say Agadello's. Um, Jesse Zard has contributed a lot more from uh, much farther from goal. Well, I think that's because like maybe like 20 minutes before the game, Bruce Arena like went to Juan Agudelo and said, hey, you've seen Christi- uh, <laughs> sorry, Christian Pulisic. You know him, right? And Agudelo <laughs> was like, yeah. He's like, right, just do that. Just do what he does. We'll be fine. Because he was trying to do that same like running people down, chasing people down. So I did feel a little bit like Agudelo maybe had uh, – a rough evening because of what he was asked to do. I have a decent amount of frustration at times with Jassy Zardes. And I think I'm strangely enough in the same boat as you uh, this evening okay. that I didn't love his performance, but I definitely didn't hate it as much as a lot of people on Twitter. And I'll say that the U.S.'s second goal was the one that I thought was more impressive from Jassy Zardes, even though he's not the one who supplies the direct assist. Oh, OK. Talk me through that. All right, because if you, if you go back and watch, it's the United States 
actually keeping possession and moving the ball. And it starts with <laughs> Zardes collecting a loose ball, turning, driving into the final third, and then slowing down. Mm. He doesn't do the, oh, we got the ball back, I'm going to drop it to midfield. He doesn't dribble and just try to shoot, as I felt like we saw a lot of players do. Again, it felt sort of me first in yeah. a lot of occasions where Z- it didn't need to be me first. Zardes and Ariola both did that maybe a little too much. Yeah. yeah, but in this sequence, Zardes gets the ball, drives into the attacking third or the defensive third, if you're Martinique, and then slows it down. And then he finds a pass, and then they find another pass, and then they find another pass, and then there's an overlap, and that ball comes in, and it's yeah. a goal. So and Bedoya, it was the- Bedoya finds Lehigh on the overlap, right? And Lehigh yeah. slides it back across for Jordan Morris, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think Bedoya maybe deserves like the MLS assist on that one. Absolutely. Even if uh, even if in like major international tournaments they don't give MLS <laughs> assists, they probably should for that. But again, that starts with Jassy Zardes, I think, making a smart attacking play. Yeah. Now, he definitely had his fair share of silly decisions and bad touches and holding onto the ball a little bit too much. But again, maybe this is a situation in which the bar was lowered yeah. because nobody, I feel like, really shown tonight. So by that, by that level, he, he like had the best. It's basically like if everybody got a C- minus on a paper, so the person who, C plus, who gets a C+, plus, the curve makes that person get the A. It's sort of like that, I would say. <laughs> and it was Zardes that supplied the final low ball in for Jordan Morris to score mm-hmm. the, the winner, right? Which essentially was the winner to make it 3-2. Yeah. Um, and actually, Seattle fans, before you get mad at me, you're right. Jordan Morris is the one who gets the A yes. on the evening. He Not- gets two goals and they're smart goals. He gets the credit. Not least because the first goal, so Morris's first goal, the US's mm-hmm. second goal, left-footed finish. Out, yep. He, he travelled with his left foot. I'm pretty sure it was the outside of his left foot as that ball came in from Eric Lehigh. Because so I remember my um, indentured servant British commentator. Because I'm Sorry, by the way, uh, listeners, I'm up in northern Michigan right now. Yep. Um, I'm not down in the studio with Taylor. You're in the studio because I saw a photo on Twitter. So I, re- I know that TV. I've seen that before. Um, yeah, I actually... <laughs> uh, here, here's a, a view behind the curtain as to how ditzy uh, this guy host can be i went and bought beer for this evening daryl <laughs> to share with me uh, yep <laughs> kind of space for a minute i was like oh I'll get, I'll get some beer and some snacks and then i got and then as soon as i checked out i was like oh daryl's not gonna be there i'm dumb <laughs> i'm sorry but you could always get an amazon drone send it up here yeah that's fine actually i just i like i, I poured one out for you and then there's like a bowl of popcorn for uh for when you come back i'm sure that'll be uh, pristine when i get back oh yeah totally <laughs> so my british commentator <laughs> okay, says, as though your desk is ever pristine <laughs> my british commentator says a routine finish for jordan morris and it made me Incorrect. think you do not watch a lot of jordan morris do you because that was his left foot it was and it also i mean we saw paul Ariola fail to put away a sliding quote-unquote routine chance <laughs> so i mean nothing was routine about that game uh-uh, uh-uh, and he puts uh-uh. himself in the right position to get that goal same thing for the for his second the usa's third so anything else to say before we um click stop on our quick take hot take and prepare to do the rewatch to figure out the deep version of what what went right and what you know oh, sorry what went wrong but what ultimately went right because we won three two um, yeah, I'll, I'll quickly say that uh, I was more impressed by Justin Morrow than I thought I was going to be, huh. specifically because in the first like 10 or 15 minutes of the second half, I felt like he was making some very smart choices, similar to what I was praising Jesse Zardes for, that he was doing a good job. There's one sequence uh, in the 48th minute where he had two different chances to like get the ball, take a touch, and then cross it into the box. And the USA did that so many times, and it really didn't come to anything. Yeah. And he had people back post like waving and screaming and instead he took a touch played the ball into the middle of christian rolled on got the ball back took a touch then like played a direct pass into the box and it i can't remember if it led to a shot or a corner or nothing but it was still just like smarter play from the united states and so any of the players who it felt like maybe up their game a little bit and got a little bit smarter as the game progressed are players that got positive marks in my book interesting one, one more guy i would say doesn't necessarily get positive marks but i'm thinking this in terms of um how they rank for Bruce Arena based on what happens in this game. Um, when the game is kind of on edge, right? You're only just winning three two, and if you don't if you don't get out of there with a win, it's a massive it's a massive sort of disaster for the United States national team. You would definitely be hearing about it. Bringing Dax McCarthy in with ten minutes to go suggests yep. that Bruce sees him as the guy that's going to calm this down and you know make it make it certain. So he's a, basically yep. um, as Alec Baldwin and Glenn, Gary Glenn Ross would call him. He's a closer. He gets some coffee. <laughs> Dax McCarthy can have coffee. Yep, and I think and I think you're right that that is a a good conclusion to take away from this is that Dax McCarthy is the closer <laughs> that he he will probably be in that World Cup squad because he is a reliable yeah. number six substitute. I is think it, he is definitely deputized behind Michael Bradley. Is it Kira Sedgwick? Is she the closer as well? 
I believe she is. I only know that because John Raffio knows that and announces it, <laughs> announces it aghast on Parks and Recreation. You absorb all your knowledge from uh, John Raffio. Well, actually, that one comes from Craig, I believe. He once got into a he once got into a cab as Kira Sedgwick was getting out. To which John Raffio respond, responds, "No way, the closer." <laughs> All right, we've veered off a little bit. Um, speaking of, no. um, if you didn't catch a Game of Thrones eleven that came out what a couple of days ago, uh, late Monday night, um, it seemed to get a really good reaction. Thank you to everybody who sent us their Game of Thrones elevens. We've really appreciated that. But if you haven't heard it, maybe go back and give it a listen. We'll be back, what, tomorrow, Taylor? Maybe sort of early afternoon tomorrow. The show will be out. The the long take, cold take um, review <laughs> of U- USA 3, Martinique 2, where we'll have some more developed theories. And sure. I've got some more news for you, Taylor. What's that? The Top Draw Soccer Show is live. Mm-hmm. The Top Draw it Soccer is. Show is live. We are collaborating with topdrawsoccer.com. Um, to uncover the underbelly of American soccer, homegrown players, like youth development, youth national teams, all that good stuff. The first episode is now live and published on iTunes, so you can go find it. Subscribe to Top Draw Soccer on iTunes. You should do it. It's going to be good. <laughs> all right. I think that's the official slogan, right? You should do it. It's going to be good. Or just it's going to be good. Yeah, why not? Why not? Or just it good if, it, uh, it, if you're into brevity. Yeah. We, yep. <laughs> I'm not into that whole brevity thing. Um, it good, right. period. <laughs> listen, period. <laughs> all right, Taylor. Thank you for quick take hot taking with me this evening. Right back at you, buddy. <laughs> I'll talk to you again tomorrow. Listeners, we'll talk to you again tomorrow.